Hello everyone, welcome to Pristine AI. This is the fifth video of the Apache NiFi series. If you have not watched the other videos, I have added a link in the description. Please go through the previous videos to know more about NiFi. In this video, we are going to look into multiple scenarios which we have to tackle in the file ingestion process. Whenever a file comes into any of the storage, be it a cloud storage or a on-premise storage, it comes in different format. Sometimes the file is in zip format, sometimes the file is in gzip format, sometimes the fi file is in tar format or even flat files as well. Uh, the other scenarios that we see in the file ingestion is the size of the file. Sometimes there are many small files or in other cases the file size is so huge that it, it is not an ideal way to keep it in our analytical zones. In this video, we are going to cover all of those scenarios and see how NiFi can be easily used to tackle the scenarios of file ingestion. So let's get started. I have created a process group called Handling Files, Compress, Split and Merge. Inside this process group, I have my complete flow. So the flow starts with reading the file from a location. You can see the input directory is present in the D drive. So the location is data input slash 2401. When I go into this location, I can see there are multiple files present. Some are the flat files like CSV. We have the zzip file, we have the tar file, and we have the zip file as well. So this processor is going to read these files. When I start this processor, you can see that all the four files have been listed. Now the first file processor will read all those files and bring into the NiFi zone. You can now see that the file has now been read by this NiFi, uh, this NiFi processor and we have those files in the queue. There is a separate process group called as compression check inside which we have defined all of the compression that, that is possible in this flow. If uh, we get some other compression format, we are going to ignore those files. There is one more thing to look into. We can see that these are the processors and this is a process group. So to connect the processors with a process group, there is something called as a port. There are two ports. One is called as an input port and the other one is the output port. If you want to connect two different process groups or different processors and process groups, we can use the ports to connect them. If you want to organize our flow such that all the processes that, that are of similar type goes inside one process group, we can do that. In this case, we want to keep all of the compression flows inside the compression check uh, processor. Similarly, we are going to see how we are going to split the data and all the flow regarding the split data is inside the split data process group. Once the data is splitted, we are going to merge this data set and the flow regarding the merging of files lies in this particular process group. To connect to process group, let's say I am going to delete this connection and I'll reconnect. You have to just uh, hover over here and you can connect this process group with the other process group. If you see, you can see that there is an output port already available inside a compression check process group and in the split data process group, there is something called an input port. So I am saying that whatever output comes from a compression check process group should go inside this process group using the input port. Now let's go into the compression check process group. Once the data is read from the input port, we are going to use route on attribute processor to verify the file name. If the file name ends with CSV, then it will go via CSV route. If the file name ends with a zzip, it will go via zzip route. If the file name ends with a zip, it will go via a zip route. Let's look into the flow file that is available in the queue. There are four files available. One being zip file, another one is a tar file, zzip file, as well as a CSV file. One of the things that is common in each of the flow file are the attributes. Each flow file is going to have an attribute called as a file name. We can play around with this particular attribute and create a flow. In our scenario, we want to check the extension of the flow file. So the route on attribute processor 
it basically check a different conditions on the flow file attributes and create a new route for a particular flow file. So in this scenario, I am saying if the file name ends with CSV, then you should follow a CSV route. Similarly, if a file name ends with a zzip, you should follow a zzip fi file route. Once we have created such routes, there are different processors to process those files. There is an unpack content processor. In this processor, if the file name is a zip file, you can select it over here and it will unzip those files. If the file name is a tar file, you can again select this particular tar file option and it will un unpack that particular file. If you see, I have created two processors from unpack content. One will do the unzip and the other one will do the untar. Similarly, there is a compress content processor based on the mode. If you want to decompress, you can use decompress option. If you want to compress the file, you can use the compress option. You can choose those options over here. And based on the compression format, if it is a zzip format, you can select a zzip. If it is another format like snappy, you can select the snappy format. Our file is in zzip format. That's why I have selected zzip over here. If the file name is CSV, we don't want to do anything since it is already in the CSV format. We will connect it directly to the output port. Similarly, all other processors, once they have done their job, they will send the file to the output port. Let me start this processes using the start option in the process group directly. We can see there are four files in the uh, queue. Once we have uncompressed those files, we can see that the extension of file is now CSV for all of them. Next step is to split the data. Let's assume that we have a huge file and those huge file you can't keep in the SDFS location. You want a set of small files so that it would be easy to process. In such cases, there is a processor called a split text, which works on the text file and it will split those data into separate records. If we see the split text processor, you can see there is a property called as a line split count. If you hover over the question mark, it will give you the description of that property. This basically means that how many number of lines you want in each files that is being splitted. In this scenario, we have kept only one line per file. Once we have configured this, this will output us different files, uh, which will have only one record per file. So let me start this particular processor and see how it goes. We can now see that there are 20 K files. And if I go into one of the file, I'll go into the list queue. I'll just open one of the files. And in the detail section, we can also view the content of this file. So if I click on the view, I can see there's only one record available for a file. Similarly, all those files will have only one record available. Now let's consider another scenario where there are multiple small files and you don't want to keep small files in your target system. To avoid such issues, we can go into the merge data process group where we are going to use a merge content type of a processor. This particular processor will merge multiple small file into a huge file. If we go into this processor, we can see multiple properties which can be tweaked as per our requirement. So in our case, the property of concern is this. I am saying that I want at least 500 record in one file and at max 1000 records in one file. So when I configure this property, it will make sure that at least 500 records are available in my new file and not more than 1000 records are available in this file. So if I go and start this flow, we can see that there are a lot of files in queue for now. Once that is completed, we can see that there are a small set of files that is available as an output. Once the input is processed from most data, we can see the file count has been reduced to 21. If I now go into the queue 
and look into one of the files there are 999 records available also it has not exceeded 1000 count so this is how merge content processor works once we have made those changes we can now go into the change file name processor in the change file name processor which is actually an update attribute kind of a processor which is available in the processor section you can check on update attribute this particular processor is used to update new attributes these attributes can be used later in the flow for example since we have 21 file and if i go into this these files and see the file name it is same you can see the file name is healthcare dataset stroke data.csv if we are going to write the file with the same file name we are going to face a conflict either we are going to face an error or if we have configured it to ignore the new files then we are always going to have a older file to avoid that scenario what we can do we can add some unique id on each file so that every time a new file comes in it will have a new name so if you go into the update attribute processor you can see i have used nifi expression language and in this particular expression language, I have, I have used substring before last dot. So since our file name extension is dot CSV, I am going to take the complete substring before this dot. And after that, I am going to append a UUID. And finally, the extension is dot CSV. Once I have done that, and also I have configured the path. You can see the path is data output slash 2401. Once I configure this processor and start it, you can see into multiple files that the file name has now been changed. You can now see that the file name also has a UUID appended over here. Finally, we are going to use a put file processor to ingest all the files in the target location. Now you can see over here, see in the target path, there is a folder called as 2401 inside this folder we can see multiple files available. So number of files, you can see there are 21 items that is now available. We have performed decompression. We have split the files. We have also merged the files. And finally, we have written those files into the target location. So this is how we can use NIFI to deal with multiple scenarios on file ingestion. Thank you for watching this video. If you like our content, please like, share and subscribe.